Welcome back to another episode of Chat with Chet. And today, I get to do what I love to do, and that's set with a smart guy. I'm here today with Jason Wallman, healthcare smart guy. Jason, tell us a little bit about healthcare and RPA. Uh, pleasure to, Jen. Thank you for inviting me. Sure. So healthcare is a $17.6 trillion industry. That's trillion with a T? With a, with a T. And uh, they're going to spend about $600 billion in transformation. Actually, they've just spent $600 billion. They estimate another $600 billion over the next five years. That's a pretty significant number. And uh, RPA is a big piece of this, right? Healthcare is a lot of challenges. Healthcare is very vast. So you have the provider world, the payer world, the managed care world, the clinical world. So when you talk about healthcare, it's a lot of, a lot of different things. Uh, but it always comes down to the patient experience. It always comes down to cash acceleration. It comes down to quality of care for a patient like you and I, right? And the providers are always sitting in the middle. Um, so it, it's a very large landscape. So do we see RPA able to play in each one of those spots or is it is it going to be pigeonholed into one or the other? No, it, it's across the value chain. Yeah. Um, we say about 60% of the value chain of provider and payer is applicable to automation. I mean, you have people doing this business every day to keep people like us healthy and to keep, you know, keep the organization solvent. So, you know, the fact that, you know, it's one of the largest industries, actually healthcare is the largest revenue industry outside of manufacturing now in the United States. Right, it's big business. So automation is is very applicable. And really, you know, I, I get asked the question a lot, what, what are the, uh, the places where you get started in healthcare from an RPA perspective? Um, you know, it, it's hard to say because every organization is different, but you look at revenue cycle management where the volume is, you know, the, the exchanging of uh, billing and cash between the provider and the payer. You look at claims management on the payer side, which is the other risk reciprocal. You look at uh, clinical care and uh, looking at data coming through and figuring out where are the gaps in care there so right. I can take a next action. All the way to uh, insulary processes like uh, credentialing. Um, also, uh, you know, right in the physician office, uh, processing documents, OCR, ICR, invoices, billing. So a lot of uh, a lot of application across the value So chain. I heard a couple of different things there. So healthcare on the back end is still business. Absolutely. They're still taking POs. They're still cutting invoices. And RPA plays very well there. But you talked about or talked to me a little bit about how is RPA going to play in the physician world? I know physicians enjoy working with their 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 patients. Mm -hmm. They don't always enjoy doing paperwork. So where could RPA yeah. play in that arena? Yeah. If I, so I spend a lot of time with executives, CIOs, CTOs, and CFOs. But not a lot of time with doctors. But when I do, it, it's actually really, it's gold for us because we really get to understand the pain of the physician. And ultimately, I would like to see RPA really make a play there. And it's getting there. It's maturing in the organization. But uh, we all see it as patients going into the, the office, they're typing on the computer, they're right. asking us questions. Uh, the physicians really want to be hands off, right? They want to spend more time with the patient. So we're going to be reduce that wait time or that time waiting exactly. out in the wait room if that doctor's not doing paperwork in the back office. So the average wait time is about 15 to 20 minutes in the physician's office. Um, most people still have to do registration themselves. Uh, when you get in there, <clears throat> the average time on a computer is about 4,000 clicks per patient. Wow. And also the average physician will touch about 20,000 pieces of document over the year themselves, not even counting the administration that's working in the back office. So that being said, and those are some great numbers. If we took 20, 30, 40% of those clicks and we're able to reduce them into a bot, how much money are we talking about? How much time are we talking about? Money is, is uh, pales in comparison to the time they spend Absolutely. with the patient. Uh, I mean, really the average uh, uh, time that you have in that that window when you're with the, the physician is maybe 15, 20 minutes, right? right? Now, about 40% of that is them on the computer. So it doesn't necessarily increase your time with the physician because they have other patients, right. but it's more quality time. And that quality time is key to care. Absolutely. So we understand that, that healthcare, uh, we hear on the layman's room, we hear on the outside, education is behind the technology, healthcare is behind the technology. Is that true? So uh, let me rephrase it. Are there legacy systems? Or are they up to date on the cutting edge of technology? Because I believe that they're a, a bit back. Yeah, I started with so, and really the answer should be yes. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's no surprise and it's not a hidden fact at all. Um, there's a lot of editorials out there on there. There's a whole organization, HIMSS, that yeah. reports this on a daily basis. Right. Like I said, $600 billion transformation. They're trying to come with time. And a lot of it is, uh, is connected to data, right? 
we're all protected under federal law with our health information. So just scaling up new platforms takes a while because they have to make sure that we are that secure. Is, that's a great um, point. But uh, they're, they're really getting there. They've made a, a lot of huge leaps, especially in the payer world. They're, they're getting more updated, going more commercial platform. In the provider world, you're seeing more uh, uh, evolved EMRs and EHRs. You're seeing cloud come into some of that now. Every organization is in a different place. So there's some I'll see more modern yeah. platforms yeah, yeah. and some that are still very legacy. So before we before we get too too far away from the, the point, I heard something I want to talk about. When we, we talk about the our data being protected in healthcare, one of the things on the business side that I, I've done a lot of uh, is, is when I got the auditors in and the SOCs and the compliance folks in, it was a big battle in the beginning because is my stuff going to be secure? Am I going to have control? And over there, once we got them on board, it was an overwhelming response. Are you seeing that as we put RPA in the medical professions that we're able to protect that data better and that we are less exposed to, to causing problems? Or what, what are you seeing in that arena? So it's really a twofold piece. Um, and I get asked this question a lot. Is my data safe with RPA? And a absolutely, because it's really not storing anything. Not really, it isn't storing anything. It's just, it just moving it through A to B. Uh, there's actually more risk in a human being doing the right. process than a, than a robot. So that's always my response. Is, Let's say that again, there's more risk where? There's more risk with the human than there is with the robot. Right. And think about quality and audit, you know, the uh, CIO with their auditing team. Yeah. Who doesn't like a 100% audit? Accuracy accuracy, automation. So when I talk about the ROI of a single automation, it's efficiency, the number of man hours removed, it's cost avoidance, where you have to add cost, it's risk avoidance, uh, it's that compliance in SOX, and it's accuracy. Out of those five, which one do you think, or which two or three are the biggest players here in, in healthcare? Quality and accuracy. Quality and I mean, we all, we all like cost reduction, yep. let's face it, right? Um, but everyone has a different gain from RPA, but in the healthcare industry, quality and accuracy Fantastic. is really is really the gain, especially as we start to grab these mass data sets and we're trying to make something out of it. You know, I was in an AI conversation the other day, and um, you know, healthcare is also one of the industries that are investing heavily in artificial mm -hmm. intelligence and machine learning. Sure. And RPA is second. Yep. All other industries, it's reverse. Yeah. Uh, however, less than 10% of those AI mechanisms yep. are actually meeting production because of the fear of biasism. So oh, the bias quality, in the data itself. So quality, accuracy, solving interoperability is where That's RPA fantastic. plays. So um, when you look at, when you talk to me about the healthcare industry, it's not just the hospitals, it's not just the physicians, but insurance and their interactions in there. Does RP, could RPA help put those things together or build some sort of congruency mm -hmm. across those? Yeah, um, and that's really the, uh, the, the end goal. Uh, we talk about interoperability. Sure. Um, what's interesting, Hims just came out and said, um, you know, most organizations will spend about 250, 250 to 300 million dollars in interoperability problems right. every five years. And every five years they come out with a new standard to try to solve that interoperability. Uh, the new one is, is HL7 Fire, which by the way, in our go market, we now have an accelerator that builds it right into our RPA because we know that interoperability is going to be key. Uh, so moving data between platforms inside the hospital network, moving data right. between the hospital and the payer. You're starting to see those integrations where payers are now acquiring providers, right? right? Uh, they're doing that to solve that problem, Chet. That's fantastic. Um, because it's easier to be together to move that data. And healthcare is the largest consumer of data out of any industry in the world. That's big. Did you catch that? The largest consumer of data in the world exists here in healthcare, and RPA can help you manage it. So when we look at healthcare, Give me the, where do you start or give me the top five places where this could really make an impact? Yeah. Uh, common question. So let's, let's talk about the provider space. Okay. Right? Everyone starts at revenue cycle management. It's where the most volume is. 90% of it is exception based. I mean, you really want that claim to pay the first time. So revenue cycle management, doing appeals, doing denials, researching clinical documentation. Um, the other front is billing. Right? Making sure clinical documents are attached, especially when we talk about legacy EMRs, uh -huh. where there's multiple screens that you have to touch to actually research and pull documentation together. Automation really fits in there really well. Uh, so so I, I liken that to the call center scenario. So call center reps on the phone, they have to go to five different systems to gain this data. What you're describing is very much the same. As they log this information up, they're not logging it yeah. in a single place on a single screen. No. It's multiple screens, multiple systems. We always like to say if there's two monitors on a desk, there's an opportunity for RPA. 
Absolutely. In contact center, we call it swivel. Yeah, the swivel chair. Yeah, the swivel, right? Um, uh, but it's not, I mean, uh, the list can go on. Um, well, give me one more. Give me one more opportunity where the healthcare sure. professionals, insurance across the board. Where would you go? Sure. Uh, supply chain is pretty oh, big right one. now. So you're talking about the uh, large investments in Oracle. Yeah. You know, with Workday, you're talking about PeopleSoft. You're talking about SAP. Um, those platforms are built to respond at a very itemized level. The EMRs that they're doing the billing on, not so much. We actually had a hospital system that had this issue and they had people doing data analytics between both platforms. People were walking in the inventory room and there was an avalanche of stuff. So they used RPA to synchronize the two. In six weeks, they were able to reduce their standing inventory by 50%. That's fantastic. Yeah, so uh, supply chain is a really big, a really big area for, for the provider world right now. So problems, what's the problems that exist? Um, with the supply chain piece? With the, well, do you pick uh, something in healthcare? Like I say, you get to be the, the smart guy in healthcare. If there was a real opportunity or a real nut that you wanted to crack with RPA, what would it be? Uh, so I think we'll have to go to the, uh, the, the quality of care area. So we talked about the biggest consumer of data. Right. Okay. Uh, that data is there to try to treat you better. Uh, we talk about value-based care. We talk about coordination of care. You hear all these words that end with care. It's really data giving you insight. Yeah. So people ask me, what do you think about AI? Okay, artificial intelligence. I always say it shouldn't be AI yet. It should be analytics to insight to action. So oh, if you want to know where my opportunity sits, it's health analytics to be able to give me insight into taking a next step and right. using automation to take action. We have this term called gaps in care. So can the analytics in your quality care reporting, whether it's claim information, 835, anything coming through, aggregate it through big box, you know, BI, you know, right. uh, da, you know uh, big data is back. And then it be able to interpret the next action in a workflow and automation just picks it up and executes like an employee would. Sure. So um, to me, that's really where the big opportunity in healthcare is right so now. So you, you and I hadn't really talked through this before. When I talk about AI and RPA, I, I just, different words, but I describe it the same way that that AI engine is, is a, a set of algorithms. It's a brain in a jar. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to use RPA for the arms and legs. We'll bring everything to that brain to do the computations and we'll take out and disseminate that information to what other disparate systems exactly. uh, that we're coming to. So we're getting close to the end of time here. Do you have any final thoughts? What's one point you want to make to the healthcare world at large? I think RPA really fits across the whole landscape and they're getting there. Um, it's a new industry for everyone, uh, especially in the provider space as they're starting to scale up. Uh, the other question I get a lot is where do I start? I think we had some great use cases here and then all these things we're talking about come from the client so you start to see trends. I would say always come in thinking big with a vision, but start small and build the business cases and then start to create those internal COEs and you'll see massive ability to scale within the organization. Jason, thanks for coming on Chat with Chat. Thanks, and thanks for watching. Uh, there's a ton of information, white papers, blogs, all sort of information. It's available through the website. Work with your sales rep. We're here to help and thanks for watching. Thank you.